you know, I used to spend all my time negotiating the best rental rate and the most construction dollars to finish out your space. And that's yeah, how I, you did that for us. Yeah, yeah. And that's how I was judged on whether I was a good real estate broker now or not. Uh, the real deal, as we've talked about so much, is how are you going to, how is your building going to be an extension of your culture? And, Interesting. And so. Welcome to PL Priorities and Lifestyle with your host, Rob Schultz. Rob is the founder and president of Schultz Wealth. All opinions expressed by Rob and his guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of Schultz Wealth Limited. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon for investment decisions. Please refer to our website for more information. Welcome everybody to PNL Priorities and Lifestyle. I am your host, Rob Schultz, and today I've got David Walters with me and I've promised this a little bit to a number of people that we we're going to talk about real estate because real estate for our clients is nearly always at least some portion of their portfolio. Honestly, sometimes more of their portfolio than I want it to be. Uh, but yet here in North Texas, especially, you know, real estate becomes a very, very important investment tool. And David, you and I have known each other for a long time. When we went, Going back to college. Yeah, that's right. We had mutual friends back at the University of Texas. And um, it's been fun watching, watching your career and, and watch you move up in things. Um, you know, so let's reminisce for a second because this could be kind of fun. So you started, so who did you start with way back early, like what, 92? When, when did you start? So graduating college? Yeah. Uh, so uh, graduating college, my first job was with the Pillsbury Company. So the, I didn't know that. Yes. Okay. Well, you were off in the Navy. Right. On exactly. Uh, traveling the world. So I was put in Abilene, Texas, and I had a territory of all the small independent grocers and local chains out in that area, not your Albertsons and Kroger's of the world back then. And my job was to sell Pillsbury products into those grocery stores. Okay. And uh, I was there in Abilene single for exactly 52 weeks. Um, I spent two weekends in Abilene. Otherwise, I was back in Austin, in Dallas, Fort Worth, or going to see a Longhorn game or doing something other than stay in Abilene, Texas. And I'm not, not trying to denigrate Abilene, Texas. It was just being single. It was yeah, not the best place to be on a weekend. When you're seen at, at your age. Yeah. But yeah, so so then what, what happened after that? So I got promoted uh, in one year to live in Fort Worth and handle the Winn-Dixie account. So Winn-Dixie okay. had a a southern headquarters here had 186 grocery stores. So rather than sell to a bunch of independent grocers, I'm selling to one chain. Gotcha. And uh, the the grocery business was a pure commodity pricing. Whoever had the lowest pricing that week won. Uh, and I enjoyed sales. And I think my clients and the people I called on enjoyed enjoyed me. And uh, but it was just a I, I was always subject to commodity pricing. So uh, I found a job. Uh, selling office furniture and color-coded filing systems with a group called Tab Products. And so these are like physical filing colors. Like the, you know, there are people that don't even know what that would look like, right? If you when you went to the doctor in the yeah. '90s and 2000s, yeah. they were all color-coded files. Yeah. For, we had them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so uh, they were unique. And uh, anyway, it allowed me to really call on people, solve problems for furniture, help them relocate, help them refit their offices and so forth. And uh, I did that for a year and I'm starting to, you know, help people move into the new office. And I see this commercial real estate broker over there is bringing them food and he made a whole lot more on the deal than I did. And, uh, and so at that time I started getting fascinated with commercial real estate. And okay. So in 93. In 93. Okay. Yeah, started in the commercial real estate business. Okay. And that was your, your main footprint back then, as I recall, when I got out of the Navy in 94, was, was right there in the middle of Arlington, Texas. I, I lived in Fort Worth. Uh, so I started with a Fort Worth company. I was there one year, then got hired by a group uh, where I was based in Arlington. Yep, that's, so yeah. I was leasing industrial space up and down 360. I, yeah. And, uh, uh, which was probably one of the top four industrial parks in the U U.S. based on size. So Dallas-Fort Worth has always been a great industrial hub. 
And so I was, uh, on behalf of landlords, leasing industrial space. Yeah, and that was in that the Great West type area. Great Southwest. Great Southwest. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they used to have golf courses over there now that are industrial sites now. So uh, yeah. you, you see the value of what our industrial market did and changed that whole uh, dynamic along 360. And they're building in floodplains and pulling land out of floodplain to, to build industrial buildings just due to location and proximity to the airport and so forth. Yeah. So, you know, back then, um, I guess, let's see. So we were just coming, kind of coming out of the SNL crisis, right? Like right, so right then or? When we were in college, yeah. late eighties, uh, you had the failure bank shit. Right. SNL crisis, oil was eight bucks a barrel. Yeah. Probably something like that. Real estate was a non-commodity. Uh, Austin, Texas did not look like Austin, Texas, like we knew it in, no. the, in the late eighties. Um, but yes, so we're in the RTC days and coming out of failed savings and loans and, and so forth. So yeah, it's starting to get its footing again and the, the financial markets are in support of real estate are coming back about that time. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm just trying to, I'm trying to think through cycles a little bit that you've seen from a real estate standpoint over, over your long career. You know, obviously coming out of, of SNL, that was, those were some good times. What um, do you remember? What what effects did maybe like the dot com bubble have like for around here in, in North Texas? Um, so this this is a great question because uh, now I represent office tenants for the most part or big big corporate users of real estate. Yeah, so, and a lot of them in the technology corridor, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, no. No, not really. Uh, okay. Yeah, Tarrant County is not a big technology deal. Uh, just users of office space or large corporate users of industrial and office space. So. Uh, and so I represent tenants only now. And it's, it's funny because we talk about this all the time, you know, with the current financial markets, oh, yeah. uh, you've got people, oh, a little more thoughtful or timid in signing their leases. And, and I, I just take them through a history from 1993 to now. So, uh, starting in the business was RTC savings and loan. Then you had We've had multiple energy crisis over the last 30 oh, yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, no question. Uh, then we get to dot com. Dot com, everybody blew up, took as much space, whether warranted or not, whether they had the financial capabilities or not, everybody leased office space. And then we had the failure of all those companies. So then you go through that. Then we got Y2K, put the, the scare in everybody for a while. Then you get to uh, 9-11, which put a real kibosh on real estate for about 18 months. Uh, then you take, oh, probably a couple of financial market blips in between there. You get to 2008 when the financial sure. markets collapsed and you know that better than anybody. Uh, and then we've ridden some more energy issues and then you get to COVID. So I tell people when we sign leases of five to seven years, you're not gonna avoid calamity. It is gonna happen in some form. It is just <laughs> yeah. proven itself. Yeah, and we're all still standing, and we're all stronger for it. And your company's doing great, and so uh, it's just a fact of life that you're gonna sign a lease for five to ten years, and there's gonna be some issues that you can't control that will happen. So you kind of you kind of sound like you know a duck just kind of shaking the water off its back. You know, it's kind of the way you've approached this all the way through. It sounds like to me. At, yes, and it, so let's take COVID. I mean, we've been a social society for 5,000 years, plus or minus. So we interact better and, and work together. And uh, just just the fact that, you know, we'll get to, I, I know you wanna talk about return to office uh, here later when we get into it, but but just just the fact that you've got to be nimble. We send everybody home for, 18 months. We're trying to bring everybody back. And so, again, it's just you roll through circumstances, you solve problems, you have faith, and then you, you move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's interesting. I think, um, and this is why I was so excited to have you on, David, because I know you've been through so many of these cycles mm -hmm. at this point. You know, at this point, at our age, we've kind of been there, done that mm -hmm. <laughs> a little bit. And it does, to me, it kind of feels the same way. It kind of just 
Now, every time one of these things comes at me, at least, I think, oh, this is different. And certainly COVID was that way. Um, shoot, 9-11, you know, really any of them. You yeah. just kind of sit there and go, wow, you know, didn't see this. This is interesting. But if you really break it down, just like you said, it's just, it's just another crisis. It's another cycle. It's just another part of the unpredictableness of, of life, mm -hmm. you know? And you've got a couple of options there, I guess, right? Or really just one. You have to accept it, you know? And, and the second thing is, I mean, you, you have to, as business people, you have, you have to be able to work through it and make sure that your business survives and that you're able to, to make a living. Yeah, I mean, you don't buy and sell everybody's stock every time something bad happens no, or good happens. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're, you're invested and you go. And so it, take COVID early 2020. I mean, we're riding 2019 out of, I, I can't remember exactly, but we're riding pretty high. Oh, well, we were, oh, it was so good. Yeah. I mean, the numbers were the best I had ever seen. Yeah. I mean, it was just like, oh my gosh, this could, you know, this is always famous last words, right? This could go on forever, right? <laughs> but nobody sees the arrow that hit them. Right, and that's so, right. Uh, who would have thought COVID? I mean, again, we got wars and we got Ukraine. Those may not be predictable, but they may be understandable. COVID was totally out of out of sight. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, again, I, we're a resilient society. We're resilient people. And I, I think you just put your head down and move forward. And then the most fantastic thing is we live in North Texas. And, and <laughs> you got that right. And, you know, now we're facing uh, uh, mortgage increases and in banking, uh, uh, not necessarily banking calamity, calamity, but you got folks that are asking for bank terms that are good for five to seven days now. Yeah. And so uh, the uh, debt markets are non-existent for, for real estate right now of, of any consequence. And um, uh, it, again, I'm, you, you just have to plug and go forward. But if we weren't in Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, I, I always tell everybody, all the headlines that have been going on for the last 12 months mm -hmm. uh, financially, those are for the rest of the country. And, and once again, Dallas Fort Worth real estate had been humming along and doing fantastic. And we didn't see the arrow that hit us with this debt market crisis. So that's interesting. Um, yep. I agree with you. And it seems like every time, at least during our careers, that something, some of these calamities have happened, it's felt like we've been insulated in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. You know, the Barnett Shale insulated us from previous uh, yeah. from 08. Um, you know, the real estate market has certainly buoyed us through some of our um, our downturns from a, from a uh, financial standpoint. You know, it's just, it, it, but it's kind of like, you know, um, it's kind of steady too. I mean, sure, we have our cycles here. It's not like it goes just crazy nuts at times like it can in other places like, I don't know, like Phoenix or mm -hmm. other markets, Las Vegas, for instance. So it doesn't have quite as much of, of that of that volatility, it feels like. Does it feel like that to you? Um, probably for different sectors. So there yeah. is no doubt for the last 24 months, the housing market has been skyrocketing. And uh, <laughs> again, the debt markets are going to bring... They've shut the refinance residential sure. market out. Uh, the, the new home buyers' interest rates were three, three and a half. Now they're seven, seven. plus. Yeah. Um, uh, so it is really going to put the brakes on uh, the residential market. Our industrial market in North Texas, I, I've never seen anything like it. You want to talk about owning a bond if you owned industrial space forever. Rates never went up because we had more and more space to build re uh, industrial products. So. That's why you see the great Southwest industrial submarkets all over North Texas now. I mean, you can run uh, north, south, east, and west and find substantial industrial development. So but I would tell you that's probably gone up 150 to 200% in the last 18 months. Now, it's all <laughs> gonna hit the brakes sure. uh, going forward, but we still have that industrial demand. So it's gonna be an interesting 
tug of war. I mean, it seems like they're still building a lot of that stuff. I mean, they are here. They're building some like half a million square feet or something just right here. Yes. No. Did it, you see that? Yeah. No. It's 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 going on everywhere and yeah. all, all over North Texas. And the great thing is we still have the demand, and all of these projects were brought on ahead of this debt okay. crisis uh, or debt and equity crisis. So uh, it'll be interesting. Um, you probably won't see a whole lot of new industrial development uh, and development announced for a while. We'll see. Yeah, so not a lot of construction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about office space? What's going on there? Um, so the office market, you, you know, let's talk about return to office for COVID. Yeah. Um, it, it's been a real struggle with the employer and the employee. And uh, the employee has probably been winning for a while. Now, you take your smaller businesses and your local businesses, there's probably a much more family orientation that those people continued to come to the office during COVID. Yeah, we did. Yeah, and yeah. those people uh, continue to show up every day and collaborate and, and so forth. Your larger employers uh, ha have struggled with their people being home for 18 months those people enjoying their independence, they enjoy their ability to take care of their kids, they enjoy their ability to do different things, and they're not having a 30 minute commute each way. So uh, I, while I do see value in all that, I, I'm the biggest believer in that we're better together. And uh, you know, you if you're a young person, I, I just don't know how you cannot be in the office, not, not learning from people's successes, from people's failures, uh, leadership, uh, all kinds of things. And then, you know, they, they always say that the seasoned employee who got gray hair like you sure. and me, yeah. uh, they're successful working from home. And, and to me, I'm not, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not either. And, and to me, that feels just a little bit selfish in that somebody poured into you in your twenties and thirties. And I, I think it's right to pour back into people in their twenties and thirties. So, agree. um, uh, so the office market has become kind of a flight to quality. And so hmm. if you're the employer trying to get your people back, we know we're gonna have a, a hybrid work week. I mean, the days of working Monday through Friday are pr probably not gonna come back anytime soon, but are okay. we gonna go Monday to Thursday, Monday to Friday, half day? Uh, everybody's got a different hybrid workforce. So with that, not everybody's gonna have their fixed office with their nameplate on their door. Uh, employers are going, I am going to shrink my footprint. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a more open office environment out there so that if you come to work on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I can come work at your desk on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So the employers need less space. Um, but they're going to higher quality buildings that have, that are amenity based that, you know, you're seeing all these live work play developments, uh, Uptown in Dallas, Clear Fork in Fort Worth, okay, where people can live, eat, go to the movies, go to the bowling alley, walk to work, walk to work, yeah. everything right there. So, so for the employer, I need my employees back to the office. Uh, it, it's almost become like a hospitality hotel, hospitality type concept. Let's make our office as nice as possible. So. People are investing in their break rooms. Uh, they're making them look like a Starbucks or something with some more booze where you can get collaborative. Um, people are, uh, the office buildings now, if you go to the, the newer buildings in Dallas, uh, um, they're putting in their common areas, golf simulators, ping pong tables, foosball, all so that's all that crazy stuff that came out like in 2000 mm -hmm. during all the dot com and then kind of went away. Right. And now it's kind of back. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you've, there was a development announced the other day that they're putting pickleball courts in. So uh, the goal. Have you played pickleball yet? Uh, yes. My wife plays a ton. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, I haven't done it yet. I was just. It, it's interesting. But yeah, I have okay. not caught the bug like everybody yeah, else. Yeah, so, because that just sounds crazy to me to have pickleball in the office, but. But it's gotta be the fastest growing sport out there. It is, and, yeah. And so everybody is just looking for amenity-based product or office products. So you see Uptown in Dallas where they cannot build nice, beautiful buildings quick enough. That's where employers wanna put their people. 
the rents are ridiculous, but they're taking, the rents may go up 50%, but they're taking 40% less space. Okay. So uh, there's some trade off in there as you go through those Okay. Things. So it sounds like the the industry itself is coping with this and adjusting and you know their margins are are increasing due to the fact that this is higher quality stuff and you know you sound pretty positive about you know there not being a a, a massive issue with a bunch of buildings going vacant or anything like that. I I still I think if you own B and C product that that could be a problem. Yeah, you're okay. you're you're gonna have concerns uh, in that and when I say B and C that probably your lower end of the rental okay. scale uh, sure. in less desirable locations and, and, and so forth uh, I see issues that could arise in, in that type product but I think your A buildings your trophy properties um, your well located walkable amenity based properties um, uh, should do just fine um, where you're seeing in some of the larger cities, people are converting office buildings to hotels, maybe to high-rise multifamily. Um, so I, I think you'll see more and more of that. Um, I, I don't know how much we'll see of that in North Texas. Uh, office has never seemed to get terribly overbuilt. It used to, um, but it seems to, developers have taken a measured uh, risk uh, in building office product going forward. So. I don't think we're overrun with a too large a supply of office. I still, you know, you're talking about how it's just different here in Dallas Fort Worth. You know, I was in Denver. I spent a decent amount of time in Denver the last few weeks. Totally different. I mean, so I was in a large, um, uh, I wasn't in Powers main headquarters. Mm -hmm. They have these three gorgeous towers. They're about 10% full. Most of the people that we were meeting with were coming from home to meet with us in mm -hmm. their office, which mm -hmm. I thought was crazy. You know, we kind of took a tour and it was just, it was devoid of people. So that was How, a single tenant office building? Yeah, three, three towers okay. for one very, very large, fast growing, right. you know, company. Um, I mean, how long are these, how long are they gonna hold on to that kind of space? and wait for their employees to come back? It's a great question. Your, your C-suite and your executives, your CEOs and your CFOs, they're tired of paying for space. They're Gotta not be. using. <laughs> they uh, have to be. And, and so I, it, you got to take the loss and write it off. Sell the yeah. dog in your portfolio sure. and move on. Um, no, we are getting to that point. Um, the call centers of the world, all the service centers. Well, and that's the thing. Yes. This, they have a lot of call center work yeah. in there. They work They work with people's 401ks. Mm -hmm. So they have a ton of people that do that. And it sounds like to me that a lot of that may stay offsite, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to have a new, uh, be creative in what we're doing with all these former call centers. And if they become, yeah. you know, ISD buildings or some other purposeful use or churches or, or, or something like that. Um, but I think the days of the law, large call center are probably behind us. Uh, there'll still be a need for them, but I think that industry has figured out, you know, it's a lower paying job. So in that industry, they probably always feel like they can recycle employees. Uh, it, it, they're probably not going to get that employee back. Now, it'll be interesting to see as we're going through this current financial crisis or for financial issues. I mean, you've got every company in the world that's going to start belt tightening. So they're all going to go, we may still have good revenues, but we're probably not making as large a profit as we used to do. I mean, you're, you're analyzing P&Ls every day. Um, there will be a corporate belt tightening all around. And they're already predicting the first people to get laid off is going to be the remote worker. And so it'll be interesting to see how that. So that was, that was a strong statement. I agree with that. You know, um, so what I'm hearing from a real estate standpoint, as well as just in general, from an economic standpoint, I'm hearing just quality, 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 you know, that if, if you can, if you can invest in, you know, 
high quality type type stuff that's gonna that's gonna work um, but you know if you go down to the to the lower quality real estate and then of course we have a major threat for those who are these lower paying jobs that maybe got sent um, off-site mm -hmm. home that those are those are some of the areas that that are threatened mm -hmm. that makes sense to me it yeah. really does yeah um, so how did you get through this this last one you know with uh, with everybody just Going back to did did you did you work from home for a while or what did you do? Um, yes. So when they sent everybody home, yeah, mandatorily, uh, I was probably home for you know four to six weeks. I can't remember. No, it, not very it, long. It, exactly. And I had two college kids at home uh, that got sent home from college due to COVID. Um, uh, we got a new puppy at that time. Which was fantastic. You got everybody. Everybody got yeah, a puppy. You got everybody in the house to handle a puppy. So uh, I, I would tell you, it wasn't terrible. Um, and the real estate business, somehow or another, I still haven't figured it out, but it thrived during 2020. That's crazy. I mean, it was one of my best years ever. Really? Yeah. And, I, and a lot of people would tell you that. And I don't know... Um, if there was a rush to make real estate decisions or, or something, but 2020 was a fabulous year for the real estate business. That makes sense. And no, so it was 2021. That makes no sense to me. Yep. Of course, we saw the same yep. thing, 20, 2020 and 2021, two of our best yep. years, you know, and we're just in absolute turmoil in the markets as well. Yep. You know? I, I Industrial drove it, land sales okay, drove it sure. with all the residential uh, and then so, all the stuff that are accretive to those things. All right, so that was the influx of money. Yeah then that created all that, which was the same for us. Yeah. You know, um, so I stayed home for four to six weeks. I can't remember exactly. And, uh, I work for CBRE now. I used to go down and check the mail and then just stay down there. Uh, so I was the only one there Yeah, and offices were back open. We were, we were not open, uh, only, uh, uh, and real estate was considered a, um, uh, Pertinent job or whatever yeah, you call it. I, yeah, I forgot. Uh, uh, critical. Critical. Yeah. yeah. So, so real estate got to continue. So, uh, but yeah, probably for nine months, I was the only person in eighty five hundred feet every day. Yeah, and so that's another thing that I think about about this. You know, people coming back to work. It's it's kind of like you know which comes first kind of situation. And I, this went through my head when I was up in Denver because um, even downtown Denver was just. I mean, just desolate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so being social beings, I love that you talked about that at the at the first. You know that you know we're social beings. We want to be around people, so so forth. So going back to the office wasn't a very social thing, right, for you. And it's it still can be that way for a lot of folks. It's like, oh, well, I want to get back to the office and get into you know some some kind of social situation. But if nobody's there, it doesn't happen. You know, yeah, I, I would, I'd say right now, me measurements range from forty to sixty percent office occupancy now. Not that's office rentals, thought, but that, yeah, that's higher than I thought it was. Yeah, so we, and it's higher in Dallas Fort Worth. So I, I'd tell you we're probably fifty to sixty percent mm. back to the office. So that means forty to fifty percent of the employees are not back. And okay, so here that's enough of a critical mass, I think, that if it was me, I would go, yeah, okay, I'm gonna go back because so I'm gonna see some of my buddies. Yeah. But down at that 10 to 20 percent, no. It, it it's light. But being in the real estate business, I walk downtown Fort Worth, I drive to other sites. So I was engaging and around people all the time. So yeah. it, it it worked for me. Um it's just gonna be. I, I'm just a big believer that uh, you know, two people having a cup of coffee on accident that we both went to the coffee maker. You start talking about what they do and what I do, uh, or what our specific specialty is at, at our company, and I just think you create opportunities, you create ideas, you create synergy and camaraderie and and all the things that that we need as social human beings. Uh, uh, not to digress, uh, my mother was in a nursing home during COVID and pretty strong. She had Alzheimer's uh, yeah. and, and so forth. 
And in their pod, they had the, the open entertainment room and dining room where everybody went and they went back to their, basically their dorm rooms. And, uh, you know, when COVID hit and all the restrictions that were put on nursing homes, they basically got sent to their rooms and uh, ate on a TV tray at the end of the doorway. And so my mother, her brain did not work properly, but she used to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner with four other ladies whose brains did not work wonderfully. And they used to laugh and talk and discuss. But when she got sent back to basically all of them to solitary confinement, I mean, she lost 70 pounds. and. Oh. Uh, you, you just can't survive that. So I'm a big believer in the innate God created us to be social people. And uh, I just think that people, uh, their personalities change. Uh, people would self-admit that they go, I'm not, I'm back at the office because I'm not the same person I was before. And so uh, I, I just think it's real important. And then I'm always confused by the the employee that can't come back to the office, but they can go to the Texas Longhorn football game or go sit in a movie theater or go eat in a restaurant. And let me tell you, you go to the UT game and you're, you're like face to face. There's a hundred thousand people there. Yeah. Trying to get in and out of that place. Yeah. Yeah. No, that that is interesting. Um, You know, something that came to mind when you were talking about that. And I love, I love this thread that we've gotten on just being social people needing to be around people. Um, I saw something recently that said that, you know, post-COVID, certainly uh, church attendance is way down. Um, Rotary clubs have been decimated. Chambers of commerce, um, all these different pieces of our community structure, um, most of them around business, but then also faith and so forth, have have stayed permanently down, I believe, since COVID uh, has uh, kind of e- emerged. Mm-hmm. Um, that really concerns me. I agree. Yeah. yeah, that really concerns me. I I don't know, I don't know what to do about it, but it's it's a problem. Well, it, and it also, uh, and you know, I'm a little bit guilty. We still attend church a lot, but we wake up early on a Sunday, so we got into the TBN and the televised. Yeah, I yeah, think a lot. I mean, we did too. Yeah, yeah and so yeah. so I, I I still got that, but but. And I'm not worried because I'm still getting my interaction in other sure. places and I'm in Bible studies and, and so forth. So from a faith perspective, uh, I, I'm, I'm still active and we still have, uh, attend in person uh, plenty. Um, but yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, people coming together for beliefs or their belief system, uh, I, y- you get worried. Everybody will go to a concert together mm-hmm. and... That's not the same it's thing. It's not the same because exactly. it's not it's it's not your tribe. It's right. not you're you're not really interacting at yep. that at that higher. And you may not talk to anybody that you don't know at a concert. Yeah, you're you not know? rolling through life with the person with the yeah. ticket next door. I think um, I just don't, I don't know the answer, but that's certainly I feel like that's maybe one of the long term effects that um, that could become a problem. Mm-hmm. I know like here here in Mansfield, you know where I live, you know it feels fractional like it used to be where I'd kind of know what was going on and things like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think everybody's kind of a little bit on more of an island these days than they used to be. Mm-hmm. And or, you know, just with the same people all the time instead of, you know, with these having interactions with different people from mm-hmm. from, from different organizations or community things and mm-hmm. so forth. Um, but then you take the reverse and country club memberships have soared through the roof. Oh, have they? Oh, country club memberships yeah. are at an well, and anything like what's the outdoor 100% thing? Capacity, it's like yeah. people wanted wanted yep. to be outdoors. Yep. So you know, yeah, I, I play golf, I hunt, I fish, yep. and all that, and you know, all that stuff got got yep. crazy. So it's true. That was a positive effect. Yeah, you know, people wanted to get out and actually do stuff. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, it, interesting times. Yeah, I'm, uh, it really is. Yep. It really is. Um, shift gears a little bit. Um, as far as folks that are looking to to lease or buy space right now, wh- what do you have to what do you have to say to them about different things that they need to be thinking about? Um, so l- l- let's take acquiring or buying sure. real estate first. So being in North Texas, uh, where our real estate market is really strong, um, 
you got a lot of money on the sidelines chasing deals. So there, when I talk about we're going to have problems with debt uh, and lending terms and those kind of things, we don't have a problem with equity. I agree with that because yeah. so, we're on both sides of that a lot yeah. of the time. And it just seems like there's still money chasing deals. There, there's still money chasing deals. So, um, you know, you're in the world of stocks and funds and all that. But real estate is the largest asset class in the world. No so uh, people uh, are still looking for opportunities for their company to be in a space. Mm -hmm. They're looking for opportunities to invest with their buddies or a family issue uh, uh, or those kind of things. And so it, it is difficult to find deals um, because when they come on and if they are a well-structured good deal, well located, um, you're usually going to have multiple opportunities or mul multiple offers if, if you're a seller. Um, and so he, even in the office market, if you were looking for an office building to move your company mm -hmm. in the five to 10,000 foot range, in Tarrant County, you, your options would be really, really limited. How about that? Yeah. And, uh, and, and with it, you're probably going to go pay a, a fairly high purchase price for it, and then you're going to go in and refurbish the thing and, and knock it out the and way you want it. that's going to cost yeah. twice what it did previously in the whole deal. So there's, yeah. yeah, so there's there's no there's no deals out there right now. There's there's no deals, and I'm probably not the best person to ask about investing in real estate because I help people negotiate deals or I help clients move into buildings or out of buildings. So, uh, but for the David Walters family, I'm probably, I, I give my money to other guys that are investing every day. Sure. And, and they have problems finding deals yeah. and uh, so forth. And uh, at the end of the day, you're, we're, you're single digit returns, but you get the benefits of depreciation. You get the benefits of increasing rental rates mm -hmm. and increasing property values. So uh, it, it will continue to be a, a, a good market. But, you know, everybody's always wanting to put some money in real estate you just have to be judicious in what you do, know your market, and and and, and not just be jumping into the asset class because that's where you want to be. It's, it's I agree there. with yeah. that. One of the concerns I have um, with the way people make their decisions on real estate is I talk to real estate folks, a lot of people that are wanting to invest, and it seems like to me, you, I'd love to hear your opinion, um, that... Um, everybody gets so caught up in the cap rate, mm -hmm. you know, and that, oh, this, this is going to be a good deal because because of the cap rate and all that. It seems like to me there are a lot of variables in there that can change pretty quickly and make it a really bad deal in a hurry. There's got to be other ways to evaluate whether this is a good price for a piece of property. How do you feel about that? Well, so for those people chasing cap rates, they just got crushed. Absolutely, they did. By the mortgage Cause, market. Because the, int the interest rates. Yeah. So, um, so that, that, that can change on a dime on you. And then all of a sudden you're toast. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're a cap rate investor, you really need to be a sophisticated kind of full-time investor. Yeah. Know, knowing what's going on um, for the individual or two friends investing in sure. real estate. Buy good properties, well-located, well taken care of. Uh, if they already have a tenant, make sure you've got a viable tenant. Make sure you've got a tenant with a, I mean, if you're buying real estate with a company in it, the real estate's not important. It's the ability of your tenant to pay those rates and in an increasing market. So it's more important to know your tenant than probably it is equal value of knowing it. But, uh, and if your tenant is vacating, you got to know the market and know are you going to be able to get a national publicly traded well-funded company or a local business that doesn't have the financial statement that that those kind of yeah the, companies kind have. of we yeah. default risk is what we would yeah. call it yeah it's yeah. just so you have a number of different risk factors just like any investment yep and just getting focused on you know just straight what the internal rate of return may be or something along those lines is obviously not the way to invest in anything. Uh, unless you know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Un unless you know what you're doing. Um, I just think, you know, there's probably a lot of 
unsophisticated real estate owners. We're going to find out here in the next oh, 24 months. I agree. That probably did, you know, three year interest only notes or a three year balloon. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some real estate that come back that they're not, if they've got a balloon coming up, now you got to get into mes debt or something else that's going to be extremely expensive that's going to make whatever wonderful deal you had look awful. And uh, uh, so the folks that had the ability to kick the can down the road until these mortgage rates come back down, uh, they're going to be the ones that survive. But I think we're going to have some people that lose some properties or need to sell um, uh, going in the next 18 months. It's going to be interesting. And and that could be on some of the largest office buildings in the world where they put mes debt or short terms. Yeah. So that could yeah. be, that could be anybody at any level. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, the, the great thing, like I said, there's plenty of equity to go chase a deal. But now if you're, if you've got the equity, um, do you have the ability to self fund and ride through this cycle till you can refinance or, uh, how do you underwrite this if you've got seven and a half percent debt? Yeah, so there's, there's going to be equity to happen on that. It just may not be your equity. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> Which could be a problem. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. And so so back to leasing, uh, if you're a company, uh, you know, I used to spend all my time negotiating the best rental rate and the most construction dollars to finish out your space. And that's yeah, how I, you did that for us. Yeah, yeah. And that's how I was judged on whether I was a good real estate broker now or not. Uh, the real deal, as we've talked about so much, is how are you going to, how is your building going to be an extension of your culture? And, Interesting. And so all, all the things we've talked about uh, with the, the greater break room, the bigger conference facilities, the more collaborative couches and, and, and so forth. Um, your real estate has to be an extension of your company culture and, and what it means. And so uh, whether it's in a class AA building or a high B building or a C building, if you're making real estate decisions, they've all got to be a function of what it means to your company. And again, you got to be able to afford the real estate space. Yeah. But, but sometimes, uh, well, not sometimes, we know for sure that you losing an employee and hire an employee and retraining them and then the lost training you had for your experienced employee is way more expensive than whatever real estate investment you're going to make on a lease rate. So uh, I, it, the important thing is what I spend my time is helping companies build a culture to retain and then hire the best talent. Yeah. And your real estate is a big, big part of that. Right. And, you know, just, I, I love that. So just kind of broadening, you're not just out there just trying to find the best deal. You're, you're trying to find the best fit. Yes. Yeah. Well, and, and also the best commercial real estate brokers are the ones who know what's going on. So yeah. there are companies moving in and out, upgrading, downgrading, and, and knowing those opportunities. Uh, you, you have to be with somebody experienced that knows what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it sounds like to me um, that once again, you know, all those many cycles that, that you've seen, this is yet another one, but it, at, you know, it has a huge amount of upside and opportunity to it as well as, uh, you know, consumers buying or leasing real estate, there's opportunities. Uh, it, it seems like um, certainly that on the quality level, you know, that, that good things are happening. That's good to hear. We live in Texas. Yeah. And I won't get into politics. We just had an election <laughs> yesterday. But but I think I, as you know, if you're sitting in on a beach somewhere in some other part or at a hotel bar talking to the guy next to you, they all go, Texas is booming, y'all are doing great. And I'm like, it is because our politics, our policies work here. Uh, it's wonderful that we're situated in the middle of the country. It's wonderful that DFW Airport is the biggest catalyst for our market, but you have bad business policies and bad business politics, this can all disappear. And so uh, more people want to come here. We're creating more jobs. There's more opportunities here. Uh, again, it's a wonderful place to live. You and I have been here forever. Uh, but 
I'm thankful, and I think if you're in Texas and investing in real estate, be thankful you are in Texas owning real estate. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Yeah, and, and I, so that's helped us ride out the cycles. And, you know, we've become a more diversified economy for sure. You know, we used to be energy dominant, mm -hmm. uh, but now you got plenty of energy. you got defense. You've got military and some of the bases around uh, nearby our financial services market and financial markets have, have grown incredibly with Goldman Schwab and, and yeah, yeah, Goldman, Fidelity, Schwab, Fidelity. Schwab. Yeah. everybody's sending people here. Uh, so we, you got plenty of industrial develop, uh, not developers, industrial users, industrial manufacturers. So we have created a really diverse economic platform that, that works well with us. And if you're in a oil patch city where all you have is the oil patch, you're going to face severe drought and severe economic prosperity at sure. times. Ours has been kind of flatlined and uh, accelerated increasing. So it's, I, I, I just can't tell you how great it's been to be in Dallas Fort Worth. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Well, this has been great, David. Yep. Thanks for, um, thanks for coming on today. Um, if somebody wants to get in contact with you and maybe discuss some of the things we've talked about or, or talk about their, their real estate situation, what's a good, good way for somebody to, to reach out to you? Yeah. So David Walters, CBRE, uh, I'm in the Fort Worth office, downtown Fort Worth. Uh, if you want a phone number, 817-333-1118, um, or email david.walters at cbre.com. Great. And so, so, so we'll have that in the show notes as okay. well. So you can, folks, y'all can grab that there. Yep. And um, this has been great. Yep. Yeah. You know, I, I really appreciate you coming on the show and getting to getting to catch up with an old friend and yep. talk to one of the what I consider one of the supreme experts on on real estate here in North Texas. Uh, well, thanks. And um, uh, it's been super. Um, hope you have a great rest. Hope you get to go play golf sometime this week. Uh, I will be playing golf tomorrow. I'm okay. heading to Austin for the TCU Texas game. Yeah. So uh, you and I get to live in the midst of horn frogs all the time. So yes, we uh, do. And we've been pushed around a little bit by them over the last decade. So uh, I am hoping for a new outcome. <laughs> I am as well. That's yep. going to be a a highly watched game. Yep. So that's great. You're going to be down there in person. Yep. Um, well, very good. Well, folks, I just wanted to remind you that uh, you can subscribe to this podcast very easily. Uh, we're putting this out every other week. Again, these are topics related primarily to, to closely held business owners who are you know, just trying to improve their situation with their business as well as looking to transition at some point. A lot of them are, a lot of our, our folks are about the same age as, as, as David and I, and we're just all, we're trying to figure that stuff mm -hmm. out too, and we're just trying to do it together. Uh, so we really appreciate you being with us today. Have a great week.